What's interesting is that several times my kids and my son just in the last year again thanked me for all that I did, especially when it came to the robotics things, getting him to his team meetings or getting him the robot kits. Those are the things that they remember. It's not always necessarily the books. We just took the time to really get to know them, to spend time with them, and to help them pursue what God has for them. Hi, you're listening to the Zan Tyler Podcast. Hi. When my husband and I decided to homeschool our children, one of the hardest decisions was choosing resources and curriculum. BJU Press Homeschool was the answer. My kids are drawn to the colorful illustrations and interesting facts. They look forward to their video lessons. The teachers are so creative and the special characters hold their attention. My youngest is a hands-on learner. Each of her subjects has engaging activities. The Bible and biblical principles are woven throughout the curriculum. It's not just a verse here and there. It's in the illustrations, the stories, the example problems. BJU Press has all the core subjects we need for kindergarten through 12th grade and some fun electives too. They give me the freedom to choose what's best for each of my kids. A full grade kit with distance learning videos for one. For another, I'm going to teach most of the subjects and use videos just for math. BJU Press Homeschool has made it possible for me to be a wife, a mom, and an educator. Welcome to the Zan Tyler Podcast. I'm your host, Zan Tyler, and I'm so glad you're here. We are really having fun doing this podcast, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. So I've got something to ask of you. If you would subscribe, if you would share the podcast with your friends, and if you would leave us a review, I sure would appreciate it. And uh, this morning, it is a really pleasure and privilege for me to introduce to you one of my really good friends, Michelle Moody. Michelle is going to talk to us today about everything from energizing your homeschool by focusing on your child's interest to how to provide a STEM or a science education for your kids if you don't love science. Um, Michelle has her master's degree in education. She is really a self-taught scientist. She's developed a curriculum in robotics. She has been a homeschooling mom, a single homeschooling mom, a working single homeschooling mom. So Michelle has so many things to um, share with us from her life that I really believe will encourage you. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Zan. I'm so glad to be here. And it's good to connect with you in this way and to share. Well, thank you. Michelle and I have really lived a lot of life together. And so, Michelle, I I love your story about how you started homeschooling. Um, And it really begins with your college education. So will you just share with our listeners today your story? Sure. Well, um, as you said, I was in graduate school and I was um, studying early childhood development and education and was teaching kindergarten at the time Um, I graduated. And um, I taught a little bit longer, not much longer. And by a series of events, I started working in the evenings for a biotech company and um, just, um, I was there probably a month and they asked me to come on full time. And so I did and worked for them for a number of years and ended up, um, having our son and I was traveling a lot, um, and was in, you know, installing laboratory equipment, interfacing laboratory equipment with computers. It was completely opposite of what I had, um, my education was in, but, um, really enjoyed it, learned a lot, um, and it gave me a great uh, foundation for some of the things we actually used in our homeschool. Uh, okay, and, so tell us how you got from that into homeschooling. Okay, so um, when I got married, uh, we decided, we just knew we would always homeschool. I mean, it was just, I don't even know when the conversation happened. It was just a given that we were going to homeschool. And so uh, when my son came along and I was working full time, um, he was in daycare and it got time uh, 10 or kindergarten. 
And um, we decided, okay, uh, I'll work one more year, um, save up a little more money because we knew that I would be leaving the workforce and probably going to something part time or uh, working from, you know, working from home, starting a business or whatever. And so um, we did kindergarten at a school and uh, we were looking into homeschooling, hadn't gone to the conventions yet. Um, but we did, the, I think it was the May of his kindergarten, we did go to the NCAG convention. And Okay, so that's the North Carolina Homeschool Conference right, Convention, right, for those of you who right. don't know the acronym. Yeah. And so you have to understand, we were getting pushback from <laughs> teachers, as kindergarten teachers, about homeschooling. And so we went into the convention. It was our first time ever being around a group of homeschoolers. There was you know, nobody in our neighborhood who homeschooled. And we walked in that door and I, I still remember the feeling of that moment. I mean, it was just, it was jaw dropping to see all of those people and all of the vendors and all of the options. And I was just giddy. I mean, I went for every day. <laughs> um, I went to so many sessions and bought a lot of workbooks and uh, was just really energized. And so it also happened at that time, we were taking care of some family members um, who were elderly. We had two family members who were really in the last stages of life. And uh, my husband was, had, was self-employed at the time. And so we decided I would work one more year since we had a cut in his income and he would homeschool. So I would, I was still working and traveling. So I would copy all these worksheets and I would leave them on this table with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I would come home at the end of the week <laughs> and Monday would be done mostly and nothing else done, you know? And so, <laughs> yeah, it was a little stressful for some, you know, for me. Um, but um, he was having some great time with his dad and, and he was doing a lot of drawing. He drew a lot of robots and he played with Legos and so uh, after first after um, first grade, we decided, yes, it was time for okay, me to Okay, wait a minute. Home. We, we got to go back a minute because I love what you told me when we were talking earlier about the worksheets and uh -huh. you, were, you had all this education oh, yeah. and you were boring your child to death. I was, <laughs> I was. Well, that's what I, when I started, when we started in the second grade, I thought, okay, so I did the same thing approach. I had all my worksheets for the week. And we sat down and um, it was just not working. And I, I literally, I, I was boring my son to tears. I mean, we had tears and I was frustrated. He was frustrated and I felt like I was just failing at this. I mean, how could I be failing at this? How difficult, you know, how difficult was this? <laughs> Apparently very difficult <laughs> because I was just not cutting it. And so... <clears throat> After second grade, I was, um, I really just started thinking about, you know, I'm ruining him. I mean, he's behind, he's behind. Uh, that's all I could think about was how behind he was. And now mind you, he was reading at age four. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, was really a lot of I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. And I think right. we do that as homeschool moms. We have some high expectations that we're setting for ourselves. And, you know, um, so um, I really went to the Lord on this uh, because this was a major thing. I mean, this was our son's education and we had really wanted, felt like homeschooling was the option. So I really was in prayer about this and I was, and, you know, it's as if the Lord just put this, in my head, you know, as we're having this conversation <laughs> and I decided to ask him, what do you want to study this year in school? And I said, what is the one thing you really want to do this year? And he said, I want to build a robot. And Zan, that was like the pivotal moment in our homeschooling because it made me realize a couple of things. One, I was focusing on what I thought school should be. And I needed to be focusing and paying attention to him and what 
he was interested in and how he learned. And that's when things really kind of changed for how we approached homeschooling. You know, Michelle, that is so significant. And if moms and dads hear nothing else this morning, I want them to hear that, that one of the greatest parts of homeschooling is that we really can focus on what our children are interested in. And when we do that, you know, 75 or 80 percent of boredom with education just goes away. It does. It does. And um, when he said, I want to build a robot, I thought, well, of course, he spends hours drawing robots and asking me, how do you spell this? How do you spell that? Because he was naming them or writing, you know, what features they have, you know, with their lasers and x-ray eyes. And I was like, yeah, that's what he's been wanting to do. And so um, long story short, I got on and started researching robot kits and just robotics for kids. And that's when I found First Lego League. That's when I found First Lego League in North Carolina and ended up the mom who was heading it up was a homeschool mom. And so I contacted her and she said, why don't you come help me? And so I did. And we just got into it. And then the next, I don't know, 10 years, we were heavily, heavily involved in First Robotics in our state. Hey Michelle, I wanna um I wanna ask you this question because it's just to me, I love just the this part of your story. So so Jordan is just playing with robots, draw, drawing robots, x-ray mm-hmm. vision, all these kinds of things. And so I need you to tell people what Jordan's doing today. Okay, so today he is a mechanical engineer. And um, he designs instrumentation that actually integrates um, x-ray technology and optical technology. So he went from being that little boy that drew hundreds of robots. In fact, I had a little comb binder and I I bound them. I still have them. (laughs) Um, And to doing that today as a mechanical engineer. I just think um, this interest-based education is so important. And as homeschoolers, I mean, scope and sequence charts, which tell us what kids need to know when and all of that, they're Mm -hmm. important. But if we start first with our children's interests, education can be so inspiring. Well, it really can. It really can. Um, And he just really, and honestly, as he got older and more involved in the first robotics and moved up from first Lego league to the high school level, he joined, he actually joined that in middle school. Um, He really took it on himself to learn AutoCAD. He learned, you know, he taught himself two AutoCAD programs. Um, So they really start to kind of run with it. And we're, our job kind of uh, morphs into, guiding them and helping them find in, you know, some opportunities maybe locally of what they can do to take things to the next level, whether it's an internship, you know, a job, a team um, situation they can, you know, team they can join or whatever. So yeah, it was really interesting how when you find, help them find that passion or help them, you know, you know, spark it even further where they can go with it. And they'll really start to take ownership. And that's what we really want them to do. Take ownership of their learning because they're going to leave us and they're going to have a home and a job and they're going to, you know, they're going to want to build a garden box in their backyard maybe. And they need to learn, know how to take ownership and say, Hey, I can do that and go, you know, look it up and try it, you know, on YouTube and try it. So STEM education is such a hot topic right now. For those moms out there who are and dads who don't know what a STEM education is, will you just tell us what the initials stand for? Sure. It's um, science, technology, engineering, and math. And it covers, you know, programming, which is a, you know, a big thing right now. Um, You know, uh, like I said, engineering, biology, science, uh, and biology, chemistry, you know, any, any of those, um, and like I said, programming. So that's that's what it covers, and it is a hot topic. And there are, and I think especially since COVID, there are so many online opportunities. Um, you know, when he was coming through, there weren't 
as many online opportunities to learn AutoCAD and programming. Um, thankfully, I had a background in it. You know, I had, had been programming for, you know, 15 years. And but so, you taught yourself that too because your education was early childhood, which I is did. so amazing to me. Yeah, I did. Well, you know, it's funny. We each, we, you know, we are born with the, you know, different skills. And yes, we have the education that we, we obtained and it gives us certain skills, but boy, there are so many more that God gives us that uh, we get in a situation where they come out and we're like, wow, I really love this. And, you know, I love the logic and I love the challenge of programming. So, yeah. And I, I started that in graduate school. I taught, started teaching myself programming because I had to, to do statistics, but yeah. So, okay. So um, I want to talk for just a minute about the first, not the, not the North Carolina convention you went to that mega convention, which is, has always been so great. Uh, but tell us about your very first, homeschool meeting oh yeah <laughs> so uh, so we uh we went together no i went i went first by myself to a meeting it was for uh, it was mostly mom I mean, it was moms at the time and it was um at a local rec center and i remember the folding chairs were all out and i sat in the very front row because i was I did, even did that in school and I was right in the front row. I was so excited. I was with other homeschool moms and the mom leading it, you know, introduced herself and uh, started talking a little bit. And then she said, um, it is not possible to homeschool and work. And I thought, well, <laughs> We're going to give it a try <laughs> because I knew that I, you know, had to do something part time um, to bring in a little bit of income. And so uh, I, you know, what's funny is that later on I found out that she actually had a business and <laughs> did work outside so the home with her business. Always, <laughs> as you appear in homeschooling, a lot of times we have, we measure ourselves against other homeschooling moms yeah. and it looks like their lives are perfect and ours are yeah. never perfect. So we need to get out of the comparison trap as homeschooling yeah. moms. Yeah. So, and, uh, so Michelle, I want you to tell people, um, well, we're going to talk about what you're doing now in a minute, but I want okay. you to tell them about working you know, being a working homeschool mom and then being a single working homeschool mom and how you made it work. Because yeah. especially when you used to homeschool during the day and then you had a night job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been, so I was in several situations. I was working from home part-time, um, working two jobs part-time from home, working full-time from home and working outside the home part-time. So I've kind of been in a variety of situations and um, each of them required a lot of grace and realizing that there, I couldn't set those high, high expectations and compare. You know, I just, um, that brought a lot of angst and it brought a lot of unpleasantness. And so that was probably the biggest lesson I learned is that um, I had to let go of some expectations of having a perfectly cleaned house or, you know, not serving leftovers two nights in a row. You know, it just, um, I had to focus on what was really important and and at hand. And, and so that that took a lot, that took a couple of years for me to really understand. I wish I'd had, you know, someone who had been down that road before to tell me that. And you know, what, what meant so much to me is here you are, this fabulously educated woman, you had an unbelievable career in the 80s in the science and technology industry and 90s and you're a homeschooling mom now and you were working at Kmart at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, at that point I had, um, I was, um, 
I was a single mom and had one in, my oldest was in college and then I was homeschooling my youngest. And so, yeah, you know, you just, um, you just do what you have to do. And, you know, there's, there's lessons in all of it. I mean, God gives us these situations and there are, you know, so many good things we take away from it. You know, it makes you stronger. It makes you, you meet new friends, you see, um, other people, in, and their lives and um, gives you opportunities to pray for other people. I mean, there's just so many good things that God has in those types of situations. And that's another thing I came to really learn uh, when I was homeschooling and working and juggling all that is that there is good in all of that. Stressful as it was at times, um, there was just a lot of good. I got to, you know, homeschool my children, tailor their education, um, they enjoyed it and we spent a lot of good time together. So yeah, it was, you know, you just do what you have to do as a parent. And I'm in several homeschool working homeschool mom groups and they do, they work so many different shifts and mom's working while dad's at home and then they switch. And it's just amazing what we do, um, for our children when we're this convicted to homeschool. You know, it's interesting in some of, I, I was reading um, some article, I think it was by Harvard professor, and this has been many, many years ago. I'll have to go back and check my research. And he said the thing that makes homeschooling work is not the level of education of their parent, of the parent. It is the willingness of the parent to sacrifice and do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to help their children learn and get a good education. And so the success of education isn't based on our our, our level of formal education or anything else is really based on our love for our children and that unique desire to sacrifice to bring out their best. And yeah, and that is so true. You know, it's funny as we're homeschooling and then when they leave, we think, okay, what could I have done better? Oh, I should have done this. You know, there's, um, you look back and you evaluate and, What's interesting is that several times my kids and my son just in the last year again thanked me for all that I did, especially, you know, when it came to the robotics things, the getting him to class or, or I mean, just getting him to his team meetings or um, getting him the robot kits. Those are the things that they remember those things that those extra things, those, those time, extra time you spent with them. Um, it, like you said, it's not always necessarily the books and how much money you spent, but just those, that commitment, you know, that's what he was, he was saying, you know, thank you for just the, the time to drive me to team practice. Um, or to, you know, a tournament or whatever. So yeah, that's what, you know, that's what the important stuff is that we just took the time to really get to know them, to spend time with them and to help them pursue what God has for them. You know, I think there was um, in, in the recesses of my mind, as we've talked as friends, seems like there was somebody in his life or your life that was giving you a really hard time about the fact that Jordan was doing nothing but drawing robots with x-ray oh, yeah. eyes. <laughs> what a waste yeah. of time that was. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, yeah. Well, you know, when I had my um, pivotal moment there that we were going to, you know, really focus on its interests and I was going to, you know, it's really start adding hands, hands on things. There was a, a local art gallery type of place that was offering drawing classes for, for kids and it was for his age. So I thought, well, you know, it was like eight classes. So I thought, yeah, we'll do that. You know, that'll um, help him develop his interest in something, you know, outside the home. And so I uh, took him to the classes and uh, one evening when I was picking him up, the t you know, teacher came to the car window and she said, you know, is there something going on at home? And I'm very <laughs> concerned. And I said, oh, my, oh, you know, I'm like, what's going on? Cause he was never gave us a problem. And, um, and she said, well, 
you know, today I was asking the kids to draw a butterfly on a flower and he drew, he drew a robot with laser guns. <laughs> and I said, well, <laughs> yeah, he's a boy interested in robots. We, I was like, we have hundreds of drawings at home, you know, I said, it's, it's his, that's his jam right now. <laughs> We had a really good friend um, and the, who had four boys, and one of her sons was always playing with toys and Rubik's Cubes. And I remember Brenda telling me the story about going into his bedroom and saying, you have got to quit playing and doing your schoolwork. How are you ever going to get a job? And lo and behold, he ended up yeah. being vice president of a toy company. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and inventing some crazy toy that made a lot of money. I mean, it's just, it's really, it's just that focusing on their interests just gives so yeah. much life to your kid. And if you can make education unboring, then it's, it's pretty amazing what begins to happen in your homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, uh, my son told me recently, probably in the last year we were having a conversation, um, he told me, because we're talking about video games and Legos and video games and, um, and ki you know, kids playing video games these days. Cause he, you know, he played video games. We did have that video game struggle, <laughs> you know, conversation <laughs> multiple times. Um, but he said that, uh, he said, you know, some of the best electrical engineers I know are really good at video games. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. So, one before we leave this part of the conversation, Michelle, mm -hmm. I just want to talk about working homeschool moms um a little bit more because with COVID, uh, so many more people are homeschooling and so many yep. more working moms are homeschooling. And so I know that you mentioned um a lot of things that you did as a working mom that sort of saved your sanity. And there's so many resources like you were talking about. I know that I've worked with a um a lot of moms who have used the BJU Press videos. And mm -hmm. I was with one mom in North Carolina not too long ago. She and her husband are real involved in ministry and her kids are older. And they use a lot of the BJU Press um, videos. It keeps her involved in their education. I mean, she's a very involved mm -hmm. mom, but allows her to minister as her kids get older with her children. And so, you know, it's just interesting how technology has has really impacted the ability of so many more people to homeschool. It really has. I mean, there has just been an explosion of online classes, online programming. Um, there's one um, vendor who has actually like online competitions. It's like the Lego competition, but it's you build the robots online, you learn to program them, and then you can join these competitions. So it's um, it's amazing what's out there. And so, and there's a lot of good ones, a lot of, and the parents do not need to be programmers. A lot of them, there are a lot of, you know, free ones, you know, um, reasonably priced ones. And so, yeah, I encourage parents to look, you know, one thing we have to make sure when we are helping our children um, get exposed to STEM education, um, you know, I, grew up thinking, I can't do science. I mean, that's why I didn't pursue it in college. I mean, I'm doing it now and pursuing, you know, taking classes now, but I, you know, was like, oh, I couldn't do science. I, you know, I can, I'm not good at math, but actually I was in high school, but we, you know, we have to make sure that we don't pass that on to our kids now. Yes, um, there's that some fear. That, yeah. yeah, that fear. And that's a huge thing for especially girls in STEM. They did a study um, in 2018, and then they did one in about 2008, 2009. They found the same thing. Things had not changed. Girls really? were, yeah, they were interested in STEM in those early years. But then as they got older and moved into high school, they lost interest. And so this time around, they asked them why. And it was things like we didn't have any role models. Nobody told us about other women in STEM. It's too hard. The girls don't do, you know, girls don't do math and science. And it's funny how in, in this day and age, you know, 
just four years ago when they did this, that that was still very much a prevalent thought pattern. And so as we're helping our kids um, and exposing them to STEM, um, we have to make sure that we don't pass those on to, to our kids. Those, um, you know, we don't say, well, you know, I, I hated math, you know, I hated science when I was in school, you know, let them explore it. There are a lot of options. We don't need to be a scientist or a mathematician. There are a lot of online options and curriculum, digital curriculum that is just excellent, like you said. Hey, Michelle, um, tell people. So I want people to know um, that you have put your money where your mouth is and you now own the Homeschool Scientist yeah. website. Yeah. So, I mean, you are really encouraging moms um, in how to teach science and provide fun science stuff. So tell us a little bit about Homeschool Scientist and what you're doing there. Really um, have a strong heart for making science fun. And I'm not here, you know, I'm not there to replace curriculum, but I'm there to just add some hands on things to help parents um, get comfortable with science, to engage their students, um, to help them to help their kids follow passions. So we have a lot of hands on things. We have some free resources and it's, um, it's just there for fun to take that fear out of science and to help engage kids. Um, you know, we just want it to be a fun part of your day. Um, uh, we don't, you know, some days you just want to add something, um, fun to do. You want to take a Friday and do something hands-on. You know, that's, you know, that's where we fit in to the homeschool science market. And so we have, you know, lots of freebies. We have printables um, and lots of, you know, different experiments. And so, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. It's helped me get back to my roots of, of teaching and developing, a curriculum because I did a lot of that when my kids were young. Um, I led a lot of co-ops and had to develop materials because when I was coaching the robotics team and we actually made it a year round co-op, we didn't have anything on robotics back then. There really wasn't anything out there. So I sort of had to start developing uh, things. And so that's, uh, it's kind of helped me get back to my roots of doing that. And I, and I love it. I really do. And so I want to pass that passion on to parents and their children. Oh, that's great. So Michelle homeschooled mm -hmm. both of her kids through high school, and they're both in science tracks now, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So people can just go to homeschoolscientist.com and find you there. Yep, they sure can. And I am um, homeschool scientist on Instagram and uh, the homeschool scientists on Facebook, and we have a homeschool science, uh, homeschool STEM and science group also on Facebook. And we're on Pinterest at HS Scientist. So, yeah, we're in all those places trying to share and um, make science fun. You know, Michelle, one thing we have in common, even though I started homeschooling in the 80s and um, you did not, you were homeschooling in the 90s, um, <laughs> we we both spent years feeling alone a little bit in mm -hmm. our homeschooling. And so I know that um, community, support and community is very important to me because I'm such an extrovert and I don't ever want any mom to feel alone in their journey like I felt for many, many years and legal prosecution and all of that. Thank goodness those days have passed. But you experienced the same thing in the 90s and I know you've got a real heart for community. So tell us about some of the exciting developments in your life with um, Hip Homeschool Mom and oh, yeah. some other things and about how, how, moms today can get plugged into communities um, either physically or virtually? Oh yeah. Community is such a big piece of it. And like you said, in the nineties, you know, we had some homeschool groups and I was really trying to find my footing of, you know, where we, where we fit in. And, um, and one, one funny thing to mention is that, you know, going back to when, I really felt like I was failing and, you know, we had a homeschool group, we were going to meetings, but I just could not bring myself because 
there really what they were it wasn't the online communities um i really couldn't bring myself to go in person and tell people i'm you know i am boring my child and i'm failing <laughs> and so but i wish i had done that i wish i had taken advantage of the community and so i really do urge moms you know to do that but i know that a lot of us live far away or only have one car and we can't you know get to a community of in-person community or we don't have a group near us so that's where you know the online communities are so beneficial and yes i i recently um became a partner in hip homeschool moms and we have a group um hip homeschool moms community is what it's called we also own weird unsocialized homeschoolers and we have a group for that as well and so I really do urge moms to find their community because, you know, all of us, just like our homeschools are different. Some of us are, you know, Charlotte Mason. Um, some of us are unit studies. You know, so does our, our life looks different. And some of us work full time, three days a week, you know, th you know, three on, four off or whatever. Um, some people work every day from home and it's just nice to go into a group and, you know, find others who are in a similar situation and just share. Uh, there's some, you know, great ideas, um, great, um, life experiences that are shared on how to homeschool and, and do certain things. Um, you know, I have a child with a learning difference. I had nobody, um, back then to talk to about that. You know, we didn't have the online resources. And so I really do urge parents. I would have loved to have had that. I think it would have helped us tremendously to understand, you know, especially in the early stages, what was happening because I didn't understand it. So I urge moms to, to join a community and, um, and lock arms together and help each other and give each other the support and ideas. Um, it's amazing how powerful it can be when we come together and support each other. You know, Michelle, you mentioned something interesting that I don't want to lose um, before we finish. And that is when I talk to you about your kids and they're both in, mm -hmm. you know, STEM careers and they've had a lot of education in the sciences post um, high school and college even. Mm -hmm. um, you would think that it was all smooth sailing with the academics. Mm -hmm. um, but I know one of your kids had uh, dyscalculia. And yep. if you'll just tell people what that is it just makes us feel better to to see other people's struggles and that we're not yeah. alone when we have a child who learns differently so could you tell us about that a little bit sure well uh, the best way i could describe dyscalculia it's kind of like dyslexia but with math concepts and math rules and numbers and so um it's very difficult for them to remember the rules um it can be difficult for them to make change to read a clock, um, just it, it varies in the degree. And so um, I did not know, I didn't know what it was, uh, to be honest. And I noticed that we would sit down to do math facts. Um, flashcards worked well, or we would go outside and I'd have my child bounce the ball while I read off like three plus four or 10 plus five, not a problem. Answer them every time, sit down to do a worksheet and it, it, it couldn't be done. I mean, it would take hours <laughs> if I, if I let it go that long and I didn't let it go that long because I didn't want that frustration level. So yeah, you know, it was just very, um, different. I just didn't know about it. So I urged parents that if you suspect something, you know, research it and, um, and go online. So, so, you know, all right, so them. tell us about, because I had a son, um, with dysgraphia, um, mm -hmm. and Ty was 
brilliant verbally, but mm-hmm. it was like if he put a pencil in his hand, it would jump out. Yeah. And, um, and so we, he, he did a lot of his elementary education with a ball in his hand, bouncing a ball. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as long as he was bouncing the ball, he could answer my questions. But if he was yeah. sitting still and quiet, it, he, it just took all of his energy to focus on what I was saying, I mean, he was also an auditory kinesthetic learner and he needed to be doing things with his hands. Yeah. And um, and then Ty, I mean, he is just an amazing writer now. I just can remember crying because he was dictating to me for many years what was coming out of his mouth and I would write it down for him. And I thought, boy, am I ruining him? What is happening here? And then somewhere in high school, the the switch just flipped and he began writing and he can express his emotions in writing and he can make passionate appeals in writing. I mean, he is a really great writer. And so I really want to encourage moms, just like your kids, you're, they're just such STEM authorities now, you know, that they're um, out of high school and college, but it doesn't mean that all the learning was easy and that everything came easily for them. And I know you had some of those same instances where you were trying to figure out what could they do, what could you do to aid the learning when the dyscalculia was present? Yeah. Yeah. And and it was a lot of hands-on, a lot of oral um, video. We just tried a lot of different, um, it wasn't just book work. You know, we tried the the visual, the auditory. Um, Games were, um, simple games were good. But if it required like quick thinking and timing, that was too much because it take, takes a while to process the rule that applies, the mathematical rule. Mm-hmm. So you really, um, you just have to try different things and see where they are in that, in that sp- spectrum, so to for- speak, of um, dyscalculia. And one thing I definitely want to tell parents is if you have a child that struggles in math, whether you get the official diagnosis um, or not, they can still go on and do, if they have a, a dream of being in the sciences or being in the math or, or whatever, they can still do that, whether they go to an apprenticeship or on to a two or four year d- degree. And that's one thing my child, you know, because I asked them, you know, what advice would you give a student in high school now or middle school who has this um, and wants to go on to college is really wants to be a chemist or a doctor or whatever. And they said, you know, just get the help, be open to get the help that you need. And yes, you can go in on to college. It's going to take some accommodations. You're going to have to really learn how you learn but you can do it. You just got to go into it knowing that that's something you're going to have to focus on. And, um, and a lot of, and colleges now have accommodations. I mean, there's a lot of resources now for children, you know, students who learn differently at the college level. I mean, they have, you know, specific offices, you know, within the college to help with that. And, um, I know she, we got the official diagnosis when she, I mean, we knew it, we suspected it, but I'd gotten, I didn't get the official diagnosis until she was in college just because of the cost. And we got it done, uh, at a, at a lower cost through the university. And so once you have that diagnosis, it kind of opens up some other opportunities for helping them, um, because you have that official diagnosis in hand. You know, I think one of the things that you and I <clears throat> both have learned as homeschooling moms is that it really is a journey we take with our kids. Mm-hmm. It's not a nine to three from bell to bell type system of learning. It is all hands on deck. And when we when something doesn't work, we try something else. And, you know, M- Michelle, one thing I know about you is that you have spent a lot of time in prayer for your kids. Mm-hmm. And when you've hit the wall, I know you. I mean, we've had a lot of conversations at two o'clock in the yes. morning because <laughs> we are both night owls and we were working and, um, you know, so and praying for our kids and loving our kids. And so I really um, appreciate that about you. But I, I really want to encourage homeschooling moms and dads that 
education really is a journey and it's a journey mm-hmm. we can take together. It's not going to always be perfect. It's not going to always be smooth sailing, but I think struggling together and learning together is really what makes homeschooling so powerful. I mean, you are, you are in it together for the long haul through thick and thin. Uh, that mm-hmm. is absolutely true. And I, you know, I, I was a, I was home school work was easy, not easy for me. I was a really hard worker, but I was a good student. And, uh, but still, I don't know how many of my teachers were up at night at two o'clock in the morning praying over me because, yeah, I had a character, you know, because of a character flaw or because yeah. I couldn't get a math concept or something. You know, there's just, there's a lot to be said for what, um, mom, the links mom will go to. I keep, I keep a a little plaque up in my office and it says a worried mother does better research than the FBI. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. How love are our kids. It is. And you know, I mean, there were so many moments when um, I was thinking this is not working. Um, I'm, I'm having to, to, to work so much. And I'm, I'm ruining my kids. We're not getting this done. The house is a mess, you know, and your checking account balance is low. I mean, this is just the reality of homeschooling. You know, we're, we're trying to juggle so much besides the, the schoolwork, the character issues that our kids might be having, the financial things. And, you know, I call those the mountaintop moments, you know, and I, think back to to um the book of matthew and you know the transfiguration and they're on the mountain and you know peter's like okay i'll build a shelter you know and i keep thinking when i'm in those moments i'm like okay i gotta fix it and remember what god said listen to him and that's what i had to keep telling myself is this is a mountaintop moment where i feel like i don't understand what's going on and i want to control it and we have to remember that we have to listen. We have to listen to God and to, you know, to take the time, whether it's a minute or five minutes, you know, and take that time. I think it's another expectation that sometimes we put on ourselves. Okay. I've got to have an hour to be with the Lord every morning, every morning. And then we get into the, to that, that frenzy and that fray of worrying about everything and trying to get everything done that we don't do it. And then, We feel like we failed at that. And sometimes we just need a minute or five minutes to just go and be quiet and listen to him. And um, that was, you know, yeah, that was the thing that got me through all of that. And that's what I really encourage parents to do is to just is to put that first to listen to him. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for Mm -hmm. um being with us today for sharing your heart with us for all the experiences you've had as a homeschool mom, but now all you're doing to, excuse me, all you're doing to encourage homeschool moms. So tell us one more time before we go where people can find you. Oh, sure. You can find me at the homeschoolscientist.com or at hiphomeschoolmoms.com. And on Facebook, it's um, homeschool scientists and uh, hip homeschool moms or the hip homeschool moms community. Well, listen, thank you so much. God bless you in all that you're doing. Uh, And thanks for being with us today. Thank you.